In this lesson, we are going to consider linear circuits involving dependent sources and we are going to use Norton's theorem to find the Norton's resistance as well as the Norton's current in the circuit. So like we did for linear circuits involving dependent sources for Thevenin's theorem, first of all, we are going to deactivate all independent sources and then we introduce either a 1 volt source or a 1 ampere current source in between these two terminals and then we try to find Rn. So that is the first thing we are going to do. So let's do that together. So whenever you deactivate a current source, you represent that with an open circuit. So let's redraw the circuit. So always notice that independent sources are always deactivated However, dependent sources are left alone. And then here we are going to introduce a one volt source in between the two terminals. So what is left is to find the value of I naught and then we can use that to find the value of Rn, that is the Norton's resistance. Now we have current I naught flowing in this direction, in the anticlockwise direction. And so if you want to do current distribution, then let's assume we have current I1 flowing in this branch. Then we are going to have current I0 minus I1 flowing in that direction. So that is I0 minus I1. So let's try to find the value of I1 and then I0. So considering this loop, considering this small loop, Let's call that loop 1. Loop 1. We want to find the value of the current I1. So we take the anticlockwise direction and then we have the source voltage to be 1 and that is equal to we have current in this branch to be I1 and then we have the voltage drop to be I1 times 2. So that is 2 I1. We divide through by 2 by 2 and then we have I1 to be equal to 0. 5 amperes so this is the value of i1 next we are going to consider this bigger loop this bigger loop and then we try to find the value of i0 now the source voltages we have one volt and then look at the polarity if we take the anticlockwise direction you realize that they are all in line so that's going to be 1 plus 2 vx so for loop 2 loop 2 we have the source voltages 1 plus 2 vx and that is equal to the sum of the voltages dropped across the loop we have current in this branch to be i naught minus i1 so that is 6 times i naught minus i1 and then i think that is that is the only voltage drop you have here in this loop so let's try to i mean simplify this but you need to take notice of the fact that Vx is equal to the voltage across these two ohms resistor. And that is giving us 2I1. Therefore, we are going to substitute this into this equation. So that becomes 1 plus 2 times Vx, that is 2I1, equals 6I0 minus 6i1 so on the left hand side we have 1 plus 4i1 equals 6i0 minus 6i1 so we can transpose negative 6i1 to the left hand side so that becomes plus 6i1 and that is equal to 6i0 so then we have 1 plus 10 i1 and then in place of i1 we have 0 0.5 so 0 0.5 equals 6 i naught 10 times 0 0.5 is 5 so 5 plus 1 is 6 so 6 equals 6 i naught we divide through by 6 and then we have i naught to be equal to 1 amperes or 1 ampere so that is the value of I0 1 ampere. 
Therefore, since we have I naught, we have V naught, then we have Rn to be equal to V naught over I naught, that is equal to 1 over 1 and is equal to 1 ohms. Notice that, notice that the Norton's resistance is equal to the Thevenin's resistance. Okay. So we have Rn to be equal to 1 ohm. Now let's move on to find the value of the short circuit current or In. So to find In, we go back to the original circuit given in the question. And then this time, we short circuit the terminal. So this is the short circuit current or the Norton's current. So let's try to find the value of IN. So to do so, now let's consider this loop. Now whenever you go through a loop without passing through any other circuit element except one resistor, then it means that resistor has been short circuited. Now if these two ohms resistor has been short circuited, what this primarily means is that the value of current flowing in this direction is zero amperes. We have no current flowing through this branch. Now, if no current is flowing through this branch, then what this primarily means is that we have Vx, which is the voltage across these two ohms to be two times zero, which is zero volts. So we have Vx to be zero volts. Now, if Vx is zero volts, then this dependent voltage source which is 2vx is equal to 2 times 0, which is also 0 volts. Therefore, 2vx is also equal to 0. Now, whenever you have a dependent voltage source, which is 0 volts, then you can replace that with a short circuit. So we are going to eliminate this element from the circuit and also this element, this two ohms resistor, because it has been short circuited. So let's redraw the circuit. So we have this six ohms connected in parallel with the current source. And then we have the terminal AB with the short circuit current IN. So this is 10 amperes, this is 6 ohms. Again, whenever you go through a loop without passing through any other circuit element except one resistor, then that resistor has been short circuited. So current in this branch is 0 amperes. Now in that case, what this primarily means is that all the current produced by this current source, 10 amperes, is going to flow in this branch that is in the short circuit therefore we have we have the short circuit current or the Norton's current to be 10 amperes so we have the Norton's resistance to be 1 ohm and then Norton's current to be 10 amperes so let's move on to the next example we are going to find the Norton's resistance as well as the Norton's current in the circuit below. Now in this circuit, we have this 50 volt to be an independent source. And so we are going to eliminate this independent source and then we maintain this dependent source. And then we introduce a one volt source between the two terminals to find Rn. So let's do that together. Now let's redraw the circuit here. So this is going to be a short circuit. And then instead of drawing this 12 here, we are going to place it here. So we have this to be 60 ohms Vx. And then we have this to be 12 ohms. And then we are going to find the value of I naught. Now you realize that all these three elements 
are in parallel with this source voltage now what this primarily means is that each element has the same voltage one volt across it so the voltage across 12 ohms is one volt voltage across 60 ohms is also one volt now if you want to find the total current produced by this one volt source which is i naught then we say that i naught is equal to v divided by 12 plus v divided by 60 plus 2vx so for resistors in parallel we have the same source voltage across them now let's try to i mean combine this so v is 1 so that means that we have 1 over 12 plus 1 over 60 plus 2vx now if you should add these two then you are going to obtain 0 0.1 and then plus 2vx now let's call this equation one now also from the circuit we want to find an expression for vx now notice that since this resistor is connected in parallel with this voltage source it means that we have the same source voltage expressed across this branch or this resistor hence the voltage across this 60 ohm resistor is going to be one volt therefore we can say that vx is equal to one volt okay and then we are going to plug that in here so we are going to have i naught to be equal to 0 0.1 plus 2 times 1 and that will be 2.1 so that is the value of i naught we have i naught to be 2.1 now since we have the value of i naught we can find rn which is given as v naught over i naught we have v naught to be 1 i naught to be 2.1 and that will give us 0 0.4762 ohms so that is the value of rn 0 0.4762 ohms now let's move on as we try to find the value of in so with that we are going to revisit the original circuits okay the original circuit so that is what we have here and what you are going to do is to introduce or to short circuit the terminal so we have in the short circuit current now Whenever you go through a loop without passing through any other circuit element except one resistor, that resistor has been short circuited. So it means that current in this branch is zero amperes. Again, if the current in this branch or in this resistor is zero amperes, then it means that the voltage Vx across 60 ohms which is giving us current in this branch zero times the value of the resistor 60 is also equal to zero volts and then we have the source the dependent current source also 2vx to be equal to 2 times zero which is also zero amperes so this is also zero amperes now because it is a dependent current source and then it is zero amperes we are going to replace that with an open circuit so we are going to redraw the circuit eliminating this branch and then making this an open circuit so we can redraw the circuit where we have this to be the 50 volt source in series with this 12 ohms and then we have the terminals a b with the short circuit current i n now to find the value of i n we know this is equal to 50 equals 12 i now the value of i is the same as the value of i n so we can simply put i n here we divide through by 12 and then we have i n to be equal to that's going to be 
one six seven amperes so this is the value of i n so we have the norton's resistance to be 0 0.4762 ohms and then norton's current to be 4.167 amperes so that's it for today's video thanks for watching and see you in my next video bye bye